is a mother, author, a recipient of the Prime Minister's Award for her Book Drive initiative, a student at the University of the West Indies, and yes, she has a physical disability called arthrogryposis multiplex congenita or AMC. AMC causes stiffness in the joints and deformities of certain limbs. Zinzi also developed scoliosis because of AMC, for which she underwent surgery in 2018. For me, I didn't really view myself so much as different. You know, I think that everyone is unique. Everyone has some differences. So I, I just view my challenge as a way to get, get me to be stronger in different ways and get me to use my creativity and my innovation to do things differently. So I've always been independent. I've gained independence by always trying different ways in which I could do things. And so I lived a pretty normal life, I will say. Like I lived like any other child on this on, on in Grenada, I will say. So I went to school. What know school what? did you attend? Um, I went to St. Patrick's Anglican Primary School. And then I went on to McDonald College, which I gained eight CXE subjects there. Um, I was always top of my class too. So and. Then I moved on to the TA Marshall Community College where I gained a, an associate's degree in psychology. And I'm currently in the University of the West Indies continuing my psychology degree, bachelor's. How do you move around? Well, at home, I move around on my knees. It gives me more freedom and independence. Um, when I'm outside, I use my wheelchair. I used to have um, a scooter, but after I did my surgery on my spine, I wasn't able to use it anymore, so I usually use my wheelchair. Why weren't you able to use a scooter anymore? Because of the make of it. Like, I couldn't hold up my back to oh. go okay. to hold the front of the bars and stuff like that. To get out of the house, Zinzi must depend on family and friends for help. On the day of our visit to her home in Mali St. Patrick, her father, Victor Philip, showed us what it takes to get Zinzi from the house up a steep incline to the road, something he has been doing since her birth. It shows that uh, most disability persons are more mindful of what they do and more committed to what they do than what we may call the normal persons. But because they have to plan every move. Every move, and, mm -hmm. and they have the limitations, so they're already including in that, and it makes them creative also. Because Zinzi has one that she said, she never wants you to do anything for her. She tries to do almost everything. The only thing that she can't really do, she'll ask. Uh, and sometimes you have to try to push yourself to do it because um, she wouldn't, she try to rely on herself. In one of her books, Falling Petals, Zinzi tackles mental health, which she admits suffering with at times. I write a lot of dark content sometimes. We're talking about such dark stuff. It helps people, you know, see that they're not alone in situations, that other people go through the same things or even worse than you go through and so you can hold on to that hope of a better future and so I, I write f basically to help people cope with that challenge of mental health especially. So we talk about mental health. Which part of mental health were you challenged with? For well, challenge with I guess a little bit of depression sometimes anxiety so those mean too. When asked about her pregnancy, Zinzi says she experienced what was expected. I think the I think the thing that really helped me out is having a strong mindset. Uh, I'm I'm very stubborn. I'm very determined. I will say that, and so that qualities helped me go through my pregnancy 
um, my AMC didn't really affect my pregnancy. Um, I won't say it affected it. Like I had like a smooth pregnancy. I will say I did have the expected um, symptoms like a normal person would, but it didn't really hinder me in any way. It, in, I guess it made me stronger even. You know. Her father is a proponent for children with disabilities to be included in the school system and applauds the work of the Ministry of Education in this regard. And once they can't, they party train, they are going to the mainstream school and I'm, I'm happy and I, I think they continue with that. Because they they're, they're are, they are known, they want to be normal. Just imagine you, you isolate yourself and you see these people, you already have that physical issue and then uh, socially you are being isolated which in a way, but you're not being allowed. And, and on top of that, I think kids, the kids around them, you know, you might get one or two, you know, miserable ones, but most of them would, would look out for them, you know, because we have that kind of love. And I think we should use that. Don't keep them, exclude them from other things. My next, my next advocate, advocate in, on is, is to get them in the workplace. A concern of Victor's is toilet accommodations. He says, even though toilets for the disabled have been made available, they are not always to the specifications for easy access by people like his daughter. Meanwhile, Zinzi refuses to let anything stop her. We're living a life where, you know, multiple challenges will arise, you know. My disability is just one of them. It's nothing unique to other people's challenges, you know. Everybody has challenges. Mine is just that I have a physical limitation and that shouldn't hinder me from accomplishing anything in life. This production is part of a special needs sensitization program of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Program for Educational Advancement and Relevant Learning, OECS Pearl. I am Sarana Mitchell reporting.